Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Conqueror Final Conquest by Caution Arts. It plays three to six players, takes about 60 to 90 minutes to play, and is for ages 14 and up. And in the game, you're basically going to be going back to 247 BC during the time of the Roman Empire, where uh, there is a bunch of warring areas out to conquer the lands. You could be playing as Rome or Greece or Carthage or Egypt, and your objective is to control forts. And in order to do so, you're going to need the need to gather supply lines, you're going to need to secure more forces, you'll be using cavalry and infantry, which will allow you to go across not only the different bridges and the seas, and also um, daring to cross certain locations like rivers, uh, you will be attempting to utilize your heroes, your dice, and of course your military strength to conquer locations. Every round you're going to get money, you're going to get food that you can then use to generate units based on the forts that you have, and if you can control five forts by the end of a full round, you you will win the game. There's two different sides to the board. One is to be, to be played between uh, three players uh, and the other three and four. I think another is five and six. So you can play with either the two large or small maps. And if you can control the territories long enough, you'll win the game. I'll show you what it comes with, how it plays, and then we'll discuss up above what I think about it in my review of uh, Conqueror Final Conquest. Welcome to Conqueror Final Conquest, and I have this game set up for three players. To begin the game, give every single player a color as well as a specific empire. I have the Roman Empire here, over there is Egypt, and over there is Carthage. In the book, it will tell you how to set the game up, but in general, uh, based on the place that you choose, you're going to be placing a cavalry, and then to its adjacent location, uh, you're going to be placing a infantry unit. Cavalry units are worth two strength, and infantry units are worth one strength. And that be the same for every single location Rome Carthage and if you're playing with other uh, locations as well you would actually go ahead and place their units here uh, but in a three-player game there's going to be neutral units and you're gonna be placing them based on what the book says and you can go into the book and there's going to be an explanation as well as a rules table as to where you place the neutral units and where you place your units um, and how many that you place and, and exactly where so it's fairly simple also, you're going to be taking your bonus missions. You're going to get three of them to start the game off with, and you're going to shuffle these guys up, pick one of them, put it in front of you, and set the others aside. When you complete this, you're going to turn it in and gain a victory condition of some sort or gain currency, and uh, you will then get a new bonus mission. You'll have your heroes here. These are all unpaid for, but when you do pay for them, you'll get to take them up into your hand, and you can utilize them during combat. And then you'll also get all the rest of your units set aside here. Make sure that the currency is in a reachable distance, uh, set aside any other player pieces as well as any other player cards you're not using and have the timer somewhere on the board along with the chronicle cards and after your game's set up you will begin by selecting a player to go first. Now, at the beginning of every round, you'll draw one of these cards and you'll do what it says. These are world events. They affect the game in some unique way, which we'll talk about in my review. Some of them will stay out. Some of them will get discarded. Uh, but otherwise, after that, you're going to start your turn. Now, on your turn, it's fairly simple. It's simple. There's two different phases, the planning phase and the action phase. During the planning phase, you'll recruit units from your forts based on your food. This is the food chart. Based on how much food you have is how many units you can produce. And based on how many forts you have is where you can produce each of those units. Then you'll earn currency. You're going to earn currency based on the locations that you control that have a currency symbol. For instance, I control Rome. I will get one currency at the beginning of this turn. You can also gain currency in combat though. And next you will be able to purchase hero cards. If you have enough currency, uh, the bottom right hand side of your uh, hero cards will have a price and you can pay for them, thusly utilizing them in combat. Once you use them though, they're gone. You can't use them again. Then you can go ahead and move a unit. The moment you move a unit, that's when action phase will transpire. If you want to play a more, uh, more I guess, a quick game, uh, basically everybody, when they start their planning phase, you'll turn this timer over. And until they move their first unit, um, this is going to run down. If it runs down before they move their first unit, people can then bribe players, uh, specific army locations, to steal their armies. And if a player moves their unit before this timer runs out, then you'll go into the action phase. The action phase is very simple. Now, when you uh, are in your action phase, you can choose any of your units and you'll take one action with each of them. You can move or attack. If you move, you need to move to an adjacent location, uh, whether it be by bridge, by river, or by sea. Uh, so I'm going to move from Rome to Sardinia here with my cavalry unit. And then I'm going to go ahead and take this guy here and I can move it into, oh, I don't know, uh, back to Rome here. The moment you use an action with your characters, that will flip them to the side, meaning that they have been spent 
after you have no more moves or choose to not make any more, your turn is over, you'll turn your guys back up, and the next player's turn will begin. Uh, the other action that you can take on your turn, so I'll go ahead and just take his turn here, Egypt, he'll get one currency, he's also going to get to place one of these guys here and one of these guys here, um, and he's not going to buy anything else, he'll just simply start moving, is if, if he's fighting. So for instance, if there's uh, people here in Syria, I can have my troops go in to fight, so they'll basically say, oh, we're going to go attack here. And it's a pretty simple idea of how it works. You're going to get uh, points based on your units. Uh, every cavalry is worth two, infantry is worth one. So in this case, my force of two cavalry units is four. The defenders will also get to add their strength up, in this case is four. Whenever they're defending though, they get plus one. And if you're defending with a uh, fort or with your main home base fort, you'll get even more. Uh, you'll be able to utilize your cards here, which can give you bonuses to your strength, as well as any other specific abilities that the cards come with if you've purchased them. And then each side will roll a die. And then based on the difference, we'll determine who loses how many units. So for instance, if this was a total of nine points and this is a total of eight, this player would lose one unit and they would have to then retreat and this player could move in. Whenever you win a battle, you're gonna get a coin and whenever you win a battle with a specific air army, you'll be able to utilize the army and move them again if you would like. And if you win, you can keep moving up until you wish to not move. And whenever you win, you must at least move all of them but one, or you could choose to move all of them. And for every battle, like I said, they would gain a point. So if this was the case, they could do something like that. And then they would end their turn if all of their units have moved, if they were happy with it. Uh, then the next player will get a chance to go. And the game is just going to keep going just like that. Players are going to be attempting to gather five forts. These are the forts here. When you have them, if you have them for an entire round for f with five of them, you will win the game. Heroes are all unique and uh, have their own abilities on them. You'll use them during combat. Bonus missions, some of them will tell you they activate instantly at the bottom of the card and others you have to flip over when you have gained that specific requirement. And when you fulfilled it, you'll turn it in and you'll gain a certain number of currency. You may only have one, but you may always get a new one if you completed the previous one. And of course, like I said, Chronicles, after everyone has taken a turn, then the round is gonna start over, drawing a new Chronicle card, taking its effect, returning it to the bottom of the deck, and players will continue going until somebody gets all five forts for an entire round where it gets back to their turn. So let's come up and talk about my review now. Conqueror Final Conquest is a very similar game to games like Risk and other world domination type games in which you're going to be gathering units. You'll have a certain amount of units that you can have and you're going to move from location to location to conquer those areas, maintaining forts, holding those forts for five rounds and then winning the game. There's unique things in the game. You have the Chronicles, which will change in a world effect of some sort, whether it's the Huns coming to do some damage to the world and you have to kind of deal with them together or not. You'll do this bidding thing where you put all your, your coins in and you'll open them up and if everybody has enough coins, then everybody gets a benefit of some sort and the person who bids the most gets the best benefit. And if people don't bid enough, those coins get discarded and then everybody suffers, especially the lowest bidder. Um, there's also some other unique things to those which will allow you to like do extra movement You'll do, you'll do extra actions based on where you go and how you attack. It changes the game up and you're never going to know what to expect with that Chronicle deck because you could think that you have this game on lockdown and all of a sudden a Chronicle comes out which allows you to move into the water um, with your ships and then you get two extra actions that allowing somebody to get from one place they normally couldn't have gone to your forts instantly to your forts to then destroy it and prevent you from winning the game. And of course there's other ones that will give you, you know, coins or uh, benefits of some sort. You have hero cards. Hero cards start off pretty cheap and not very good, and then they go to being very, very expensive, but being very, very amazing. They're going to give your cavalry units and your infantry units bonuses to their strength. Units and strength in this game are separate. A strength of two uh, on, a, on a cavalry is still a one unit, right? It's still one unit, just like an infantry is still one unit. So when it says on your food supply that you have two food and you can hold eight units, you can hold eight cavalry, or you can hold eight of the infantry. It doesn't matter what, what combination. That was something that tripped us up for a while understanding the game. Um, but yeah, so you're going to have these units that are going to give, give uh, cards that are going to give you more strength with your infantry and of course with your cavalry. And of course a blanket amount of, of strength, plus two, plus three or whatever. Some of them will like, return your currency and give you a small benefit. Your objectives are going to range in what they want you to do based on historical context as to like Rome, for instance. Rome wanted to get capture Sicily and Macedonia. And so if you can 
can hold those for a certain number of rounds with people knowing that you're holding it. You'll gain currency, which can be used. Currency is good for buying more heroes. And of course, whenever those chronicles come up, you can deal with those in some way, whether it be to bribe or to uh, put enough money to deal with the Huns, etc., etc. Uh, this game, however, does still function like a risk. You're going to be rolling a die, but there's more mitigations, right? First of all, you have the strength of your units. Second of all, you're going to have cards that you can play to mitigate the amount of uh, strength that another army has coming at you. And then, of course, where you're located. If you're in Rome and you are the Roman Empire, you're going to get a plus four bonus to defense along with any of the cards that you play plus the units that are there, making it very challenging to conquer one of those, conquer that location, but very, very lucrative because most of the big locations are going to give you currency and food and a great hall or a great fort those things are all very very beneficial in this game gotta be careful to spread yourself out thin just like any other world conquest game and of course rolling a one can be uh extremely aggravating because you could lose everything uh, whenever you lose a fight you'll have to retreat um uh, a couple like minor things with fighting. I I don't know if when you defeat the bat if you defeat like the AI units, do they all go or do they move and do they move into the same unit, a uh, same location as another one of theirs, or are they separate? I, I I wasn't very clear on that. Another thing in the game that doesn't isn't really super clear is how movement works in the water. Do you just move from one location to another and just imagine you guys are on a boat, or is it all land based? Uh, I, I'm fairly fairly certain, and based on how we played, is each location has a separation line and you can move between those lines to get to different locations. So you can go across the sea, you can go through one river to another river and et cetera, et cetera. Um, but it still was like, could be, the rules could be a little cleaned up in that way. Um, but otherwise though, this is a pretty straightforward conquest game, territory control and uh, working together in certain ways to deal with uh, outside forces and of course a player that is in, in the lead. Uh, notes to this game is one if you are looking to win don't rush it try and slowly build up your forces because if people see that you're kind of building too fast it's likely that they can start crushing you on all sides and you won't be able to recover fast enough to uh, control locations another thing to note too is each of the different locations can only basically support putting out one unit at a time so you can't dump all of your units in a specific area you kind of have to spread them out so you need to be tactically choosing these specific locations as well if you like games like risk but you want a little bit more strategy a little bit more options when it comes to combat and straightforward um spaces that you you know you know where to go and what's your your benefit and your mitigation this is going to be a game i would suggest taking a look at if you like games that involve the roman empire ancient greece and Europe, yeah, egypt etc etc this is also gonna be a really cool game i personally really really like themes like this. this is probably one of my favorite themes from board games is ancient Rome, pagan culture, pagan history, and this was a very good job of explaining that and showing all the different locations and land at that time and how people controlled what areas and even the cards and everything are kind of associated with the game as well. But of course, people who do not like games that involve rolling dice and luck, and of course the Chronicle cards can give uh, certain players a benefit when they're uh, behind or even when they're ahead, it can kind of have them win more. It's just random as to what cards get drawn. And and how that's going to work out for you. Um, but if you don't mind a conquest game similar to Risk uh, with a little bit more mitigation and control in this specific th uh, theme, you're going to enjoy this game. I like this game. It's also frustrating though, because on the occasion, um, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I got this all under wraps and then a card comes out and I'm like, oh no, but that is part of the fun of the game. And for people who enjoy that, they're really going to like this game. The artwork is solid. It's exactly what you would expect for a game with this specific theme. The quality of the components is very nice and it's very easy to understand, provided that they, I, I would suggest like cleaning up the rules in some way, even if it's just on BGG, if this has already been, been released and whatnot, uh, just to talking about movement and, and stuff like that. But Overall, a very solid game, not too many nitpicks on it. Um, as long as you're interested in this type of genre of game, check out Conqueror uh, Final Conquest. Uh, link down below in the description if you wanna pick this game up. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Conqueror Final Conquest. If you wanna pick the game up, like I said before, link down below in the description. Also, subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe bell button and the subscribe button. It'll let you see more videos that we produce uh, just like this game here. You can also go and check out my wife's game, Moonshell and Mermaid Game. It's coming out March 2nd. You can go ahead and hit that notification button on Kickstarter to see this puzzle family friendly gateway game with a little bit more advanced strategies for people who are interested as the game progresses and as you want to include more and more modules to it. You can also go and check out our Discord, our Patreon. Thank you, Patreon members. We do greatly appreciate it. And as always, I look forward forward to conquering with you guys next time.